Majority of the organizations out there are using Active Directory to manage resources such as users, computers, and groups. But how do you actually set it up? Well, in this project series, we will be working together to build a home lab that will not only be beneficial for the blue team, but also IT in general. After going through this five-part series, you will have your own Active Directory environment, which you can learn more about IT administration and about how a domain works. You will have your own Splunk instance as well that will be ingesting events from your Windows server that has the Active Directory and your target Windows machine. At the end, we will use Kali Linux as our attacking machine and perform a brute force attack to see what kind of telemetry that generates, along with using Atomic Red Team as well. Now this is going to be very hands-on, so do carve out some time if you want to participate. As a recommendation, anytime that you do a project, I want you to always try and build out a diagram. And trust me, it doesn't have to be pretty, but we just gotta do it. Because during an interview, it is highly possible where they will ask you to draw a diagram and how would you secure it? This is why on day one, we spend a lot of time on building a diagram together. So you know how to get started going forward. In part two, I will walk you through on how to download and install our assets. This includes Windows Server 2022, Windows 10, Kali, and Splunk using Ubuntu Server. We will do this all using VirtualBox. So yes, this means that once you have this spun up, you can take a snapshot of your virtual machines and begin breaking things. If you're interested in the red team, you can launch attacks using Kali Linux towards an Active Directory environment and then start understanding how these attacks work. If you're interested in the blue team, you can detect and create alerts using the telemetry generated by our server or target machine while learning how to use Splunk, which is quite popular. If you have no IT experience, you can play around and configure things without the fear of making a mistake. This is why I wanted to make this project. It helps everyone and anyone in IT. In part three, we get into the meat of things. I will show you how to install and configure both Sysmon, which will be used for logging purposes, and Splunk, which will be our sim of choice, to query for telemetry and something that you can learn and use to create your own alerts, dashboards, and reports. In this project, I won't go over the creation of alerts, reports, or dashboards, but if you're interested in how to build those, I do encourage you check out Splunk's documentation or free training videos. At the end, you will have an environment set up and it will be up to you to learn more about what you want to learn. Part three of the series is gonna be quite important to get right because if we make an error here, we will not be able to query the telemetry generated by the server or PC. And to make things interesting, I will walk you through on how to get that set up on the PC, but, I will not walk you through on how to get this set up on the server. Now, it is essentially the same steps, but I want you to try it out for yourself. In part four, I will walk you through on how to configure Active Directory on our Windows server and how to promote it to a domain controller. We will create new domain users, which we can use to log in to the newly created domain, and we will be joining the target PC into our domain. The final part of the series will be a fun one. We will use Kali Linux to generate a brute force attack targeting one of the domain users that we created in part four. And we get to see the telemetry it generates using Splunk if you have it set up correctly. We will then install Atomic Red Team and run tests to show you what kind of telemetry that can generate as well. And just like the other project series that I did, there will be a separate troubleshooting video at the end. My hope is that once you go through the entire project, not only will you learn something new, but also gain more confidence in your technical skills. One thing I want you to keep in mind is that if you do encounter errors, please try and research them to the best of your ability and see what you can find. If you still cannot find the answer, leave it down in the comment section below as someone might have the same error and found the fix. Lastly, I am in the middle of building a SOC course and some of the material in this project I do teach and go into more detail in the course. For example, in part five, 
we will attack our target machine. Well, in my course, we go into more attack scenarios and actually build out alerts, reports, and dashboards using Splunk to detect these attacks. Overall, it's going to be an amazing course for individuals who are trying to work towards a SOC analyst or those who are already in a SOC analyst position and want to level up. If you do enjoy my teaching style, I have no doubt that you'll love the course that I'm building. I'll leave a link down below for you to sign up if this interests you. It will be a paid course and more details will follow in the future. I hope you are as excited as I am to get started on this project. If you do plan on following along, please think about putting this project onto your portfolio using any free site or GitHub. And if you don't know how to set up a portfolio on GitHub, I'll put my video in the description that I created that walks you through on how to do just that. I want you to showcase your work and seriously, be proud of something that you've built. And that is it for the video. Thank you so much for watching and remember to stay curious and do things differently.